Welcome to the RSP Boiler Room. I'm Matt Waldman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. Today, folks, we are going to get into the weeds on one play. And it's the type of play that if you're a highlight junkie, a film junkie who wants to be a fanboy over one of your favorite college players or pro prospects, this video is not for you. You can go to my RSP Film Room channel at YouTube or my blog, www.mountwaltmanrsp.com, and you can find more highlight-oriented videos that glorify the player on at least some of enough level to satiate that kind of desire that you may have. But if you're someone who's evaluating tape, if you're someone that looks at stats heavily, you're someone that really wants to learn more about the process of doing this job, this one play that we're going to look at probably for the next nine minutes is something that you should check out. And let's watch the play first so that you can get an idea of what we're going to discuss today. LeVon Coleman, left of the quarterback, working towards the left flat so that number six can get around the corner here. Here's Coleman at the numbers near the 30. He misses the cornerback, right? All right. So he's, his assignment's to block. Was this a block? Or is this not a block? Depends how you define it. And I'm not being sarcastic because let's define a block in one way as, okay, a block is you are trying to impede the progress of a defender so that he cannot get to the ball carrier. All right, if that's the case. Does he impede his progress? Well, if you define it another way is that the blocker has to make contact with the defender. Well, he didn't make contact. So you could say technically he didn't make the block. But what if you define a block as he impedes the progress of the defender based on an angle that he takes to force the defender away from the ball carrier. doesn't matter whether he makes contact or not when you define it that way. Well, you can see here, 22. Let's rewind it a little bit more. The angle he takes, he starts from inside the numbers and then works outside the numbers late, and that forces this Arizona State cornerback to widen his path. And as a result, this cornerback has no shot on number six, the ball carrier, and he's the number six is able to work right inside and he gets a first down. So if you define a block as just impeding the progress and altering the path of a defender, whether you physically or don't physically make contact, number 22, LeVon Coleman, successfully makes the block here. Now, that's an, this is an either-or situation. And I'm going to tell you why this is important, because... In today's landscape of analyzing players in the media or in football, in, in the sport as a whole, whether you're a scout, whether you're an analyst, whether you're a reporter, whatever, when you're analyzing players and you're looking at things from this level, we often talk about things in, from the perspective of film and from stats. And I think that that's wrong. I know that a lot of people have seen me be critical of some of the processes that I've seen with statistical analysis. That doesn't mean I'm an anti-stats guy. I'm far from that. My background is in operations management and quality management. And as a result of that, a lot of the work that I've done with the RSP is really adopted from learning best practices on how to evaluate performance. And a lot of that is in using statistical work or using processes that objectify situations that may have been commonly seen as subjective because there isn't a tracked number typically associated with it. And what you have to do in those cases is to create a very refined definition so that you can then create a process of tracking information that will yield statistics for you. Now, that's the thing is that, you know, when people look at blocks made or percentage of blocks, you know, being able to convert, how are those stat services defining a block? What I just laid out for you are just two scenarios of how they're doing it. And they're both 
either or situations. Did he make contact? Are you counting a block as making contact? Or are you counting a block as not making contact? And even that is limited. Because let's watch this again. If you say that 22 made the block, then you're giving him credit for why he made the block, which is the angle he took of approach to work inside out and widen this path. Well, that's just one aspect of what good blocking is. So if you say that, well, yeah, he made this block, and you say that not, you know, he converted at 85% of his blocks, well, what if we looked at this statistic a little bit in deeper detail, which most people won't who are viewers, but if you were a professional doing this, you'd want to analyze some of the raw data a little bit of a process and see, well, of those you know, 80% of these blocks that were supposedly made, did the person analyzing this look at, find that of those eight blocks, that four of, or the 80% of those blocks, that 40% of them were situations like this where the running back missed the angle to make contact. His approach was good, but his actual angle to make contact was bad. Well, why does that matter? Well, it matters if you're a scout or a defensive back studying film and going, the guy's going to make a good approach with me, but if I can mess with his angle of attack, he isn't very good at his angle of attack when it comes to time for a collision. So there's some things that I can do to really mess with that and be able to make the play. Or here are the types of angles that I should be taking because this running back is going to have more difficulty being able to successfully make the block. Or if I'm the running back coach, what are other blocks other than something where he's working inside out as a lead blocker, say it's a cut black block of a, of a player coming around the edge in pass rush, what can I do to firm up his skills so that he doesn't miss blocks and quarterbacks get sacked? So you can see that if you break down a process into various steps, if you break down, I guess, the effort blocking into a process of diagnosing the angle of approach, diagnosing when to make your shoot, your shot and attack, the angle of how the height that you're attacking with, working from, you know, from that level, using your hands, leading with your head or pads, depending on whether it's a stand up or a cut block. When you break it down into various steps, then you can give a more nuanced assessment of what the player's doing right and doing wrong and it gives coaches and staff the ability to help work with that player so that he can correct it and become a more well-rounded player. Or you're giving the opposition nuance so that they can determine certain things where that player is weak and that they can exploit. If you're just doing the simplistic, well, did he block it or he didn't block it? I mean, that matters too, but it's not giving the depth of detail that's really going to help you understand where that player is. Because if you say he's a bad blocker because, you know, eight out of ten times he misses blocks like this, but eight out of ten times the play is successful because he kept that defender from getting a good angle on the ball carrier, then you're missing nuance. And again, you know, look at this. What could he have done differently on this play? What he could have done differently is maybe this plant step that you're seeing right here where he shoots across, he could have taken a step earlier so that he took the plant step maybe at the 29 and takes another step across, flattening it, and he's able to then cut a, off number six, the cornerback, and make contact. That's what he could have done better to be a better blocker in terms of the contact aspect. But could he... You know, what he does here, it's the most important thing to allowing this ball carry to get underneath is the approach that he took to widen the cornerback's path, and he does that correctly. So if he had instead worked wide of the numbers and instead of cutting coming inside, he worked towards the numbers or outside of it and then came downhill on the defender, he would have given the defender the angle to come inside and force number six 
to either work outside and out of bounds and get far fewer yards or work further inside and, and end up getting tackled by the, the cornerback. So really, when you look at this, number 22 may have missed the contact, but the most important thing he did, he couldn't have done better. He couldn't have done it differently, and that's working inside out to widen the path. That's to me, is a good block and an effect or an effective block. And then we can go and drill down into technique and do a little bit more. So for those of you who stayed with me here, who are interested in process, I hope you got some insight about how stat services look at things and where they can be either really successful or they don't deliver enough nuance and why sometimes the stats don't reflect what we see in a player. I would say a good example of that is maybe Deonta Foreman, who I know a lot of stat services said was a very successful blocker, but when I define blocking into various steps of nuance and breaking it down further, he may not be as good as his stats suggest when people are tracking it the way that they were. Um, so, you know, this gives you a little bit more of an example of how process can be broken down. And if you're really, really geeked out about this type of thing, um, I hope this was worthwhile. If not, you know, you probably haven't been here for at least the past, oh, I don't know, 11 minutes and 25 seconds. So uh, for those of you who have tuned in, got something out of it, I I'm glad you did. Thanks again for checking this out. You can check out more of my YouTube videos at the RSP Film Room and my blog at www.mattwaldmanrsp.com.